Today's guest is Keith Atherton. He's a senior developer at Quorum based in Edinburgh, uh, Scotland, which is pretty awesome. Uh, Keith is a Microsoft MVP for business applications, a published LinkedIn instructor. I think it's two, two classes. You can clarify if, that, if that's wrong, but I believe it's two classes. They looked interesting. Uh, a Power Apps community super user. He's a public speaker. He's the host of the On Air in the Cloud podcast. He's a blogger, a mentor, and Keith has over 20 years of international experience as a developer and architect within the finance, manufacturing, retail, and game development sectors. So I'm very interested in this. I love. I'm a developer at heart. I've, I've, I I I love the Power Platform. So I'm really um, glad to be talking to you today, Keith. Thank you, Jeremy. Thanks for ha having me on the show. It's a, a pleasure to be here. So for those who have never interacted with you at maybe a networking event or a speaking event and, and get to hear a bit about your background, tell us where you're from, who you are, and what you do. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks for the intro. I mean, you covered everything really, <laughs> really well there, actually. And uh, that's correct. Uh, it, I've got two LinkedIn Learning courses published. Uh, my first one was on the Azure Data Platform Certification Prep. And just recently, I think just last week, uh, was my second course release, which was Power Platform Developer Certification Prep. So as you say, my name's Keith Atherton. I've got over 20 years as a software developer and architect, uh, originally from England. Uh, I'm now based in in Scotland after moving country a few times. Um, as you say, I work for Quorum, who are based in Edinburgh in Scotland as a senior developer. That really entails using lots of the Power Platform. Uh, there can be lots of cloud-based work using Azure, um, .NET, and whatever else that clients uh, require as well. Yeah, that's what we, that's what developer, that's a developer right there. Uh, it's completely <laughs> encapsulated in and whatever the client wants. <laughs> exactly right. That's right. If they've got something they're already using, we need to fall in line. Uh, they want to adopt something new. We can give them workshops and help upskill them or mm. point them in the right direction. Or if they just need something modernizing, you know, there's so many different scenarios. And that's one of the appeals for me because it's there's a lot of variety as well. You know, you don't know what the next project will be, or you may pivot during the project and it turns into something else. That's awesome. Yeah, that, that's 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 been my experience. And that's why I still, while I'm more of a manager at now uh, than a developer, I still continue to develop stuff for myself because why not? Um, so let's roll the clock back a little bit. And uh, did you always know you wanted to get into uh, IT and be a software developer? That's a great question. Um, actually, I didn't. So when I was really young, the only way I would use computers or consoles were to play games. That's all I did. I really loved it when I was a kid, uh, ever since I was really young. Um, but when I was at high school and, and just growing up, programming or coding just wasn't on the horizon for me. I didn't know anyone else who did it. Um, you know, <laughs> some people, this might age me a bit, but we didn't have computing at high school where I went to. Um, that was kind of, I was just behind the era where it became uh, a common thing to have in high school. So I didn't even get a chance to try it out at, uh, at school or high school or anywhere else. So really when I was going through um, high school, deciding what to do, when I went to college, I chose physics uh, as the degree to go for. For me, I found it a real challenge. I like the maths. I like the technical side. And it was asking lots of big questions. You know, where do we come from? Mm. How was the universe created? You know, time travel, all these all these things that could get touched upon were appealing and, and interesting to me. But when I was doing the degree, uh, you know, I did enjoy it. It was a challenge as well. Um, when I got to the end of it, I realized that the thing I enjoyed probably the most was uh, a coding module. There was some coding we did for some artificial intelligence. And by that, I mean kind of scripted, you know, branch-based conditional logic, mm -hmm. not, not the, the modern uh, modern day machine learning and and so on that's popular. So it was really when I was doing that coding and writing some, some software for the department, that really stood out to me. You know, I was able to be creative, solve technical problems and have an immediacy with it as well. Mm. Because when I was younger, I was looking at other things that could combine my two favorite things, which was art and being creative as well as being technical. So I was looking into architecture and other things, but realizing they're often big projects with the payoff at the very end. But when it came to coding, I'm like, oh, I could write something right now. And my computer does something right now. Mm. Um, so really when I got to the end of the degree, um, 
that was the point when I started doing the job search and I, I did realize I, I wouldn't have the IT degree or the qualifications or the, the CES degree um, to be competitive with other people. So I did look for a company um, that was going to provide training and I could learn on the job as well. And they would fully understand that I didn't have this three or four years of computer science background, but they would be willing to take me on if I got a good result, which luckily I did at college. And that way I could use that and they would see, okay, this person can learn, we'll invest in some training and then that's how I started really. So straight after graduation, got a role there and I've just stayed with it and tried to grow and learn ever since. Oh, that's very interesting. I, I love that because uh, as you know, many people we meet in IT didn't start out wanting or even knowing necessarily that's what they wanted to do. And so there's so many unusual uh, ways that happen. And I like yours because it's in the science realm, right? There's a uh, it's got and it's got the mystery to it. Physics is something I I could never tackle. I I math and I uh, even though I was a software developer, math and I are not friends. So <laughs> I I forged my path through business applications and let somebody else provide me formulas. But um, did what language then would 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 have been the first language you were diving into? Yeah, that's a great question. I think when I was in so just after high school, starting college. The very first one that I used was Turbo Pascal. Oh, yes. Um, and I think that was maybe 1996. It was something around then. And we used it for maybe a year. And then after that, I think it was C++, which was the bulk uh, mm -hmm. that was primarily used uh, during the, uh, the degree that I took. Um, and I used it in a few different modules. The main one was this artificial intelligence one. And I think the challenge of, you know, using that language compared to say, you know, a Python or a, a PowerFX or something that's maybe a bit more, uh, you know, plain language. That was part of the appeal as well. It was quite esoteric. There's all these brackets and colons. What did it all mean? So it, it felt like truly learning a brand new language and upskilling into an area that I'd never seen before. And being someone who likes to learn that really appealed as well. I could really sink my teeth into it and learn something brand new. Yeah, not to uh, slight uh, modern day developers, but it, it, for a time, if you didn't touch C++, you weren't really a developer. Because uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is a lower level language than .NET for sure, right? There's an abstraction with .NET. So you, if you wanted to touch devices, C++ was one of the places to go. Exactly right. You know, when you have to do your own memory management, handle things, you know, really close things off. And if you need to drill down into assembly or, you know, you know, there's so many options available, uh, but yeah, it really was, it really was a challenge as well, because that was so early on, I was not familiar with OO concepts and trying to do things in a modular way. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that's certainly not what I did when I started as well. It was all procedural. It was all script like line by line. But, you know, the more I grew and learned over time, I realized, wow, there's, there's a big toolbox here. I've been using 10% of it, 20% of it. There's so much more you can do and reuse uh, and make it more performant as well so yeah it was it was a fun thing to learn so now how did you decide as you went through your career then from from place to place how did you decide where to go was it based on the language based on the project yeah that, that's a great point so the first consultancy that I worked for the one based in London is it was maybe a small to medium-sized consultancy and you know, as, as we've said, with many projects, it's whatever the, the client wanted. Right. Now, with some of those, the client already had their own systems. We had to work with them or we did have that clean slate where we could actually propose what tech stack we would use. So there was quite an interesting mix. And the first job that I ever did, um, we were told, right, the middleware used for this and some of the other parts of the system is using Java and Oracle database. So okay, folks, here's the team going on it. You're all going on courses to learn Java and Oracle <laughs> next week. And then you're going to be using it the week after. And that's exactly what we did. So the jump from C++ to Java, you know, there's so many parallels, luckily. There's yeah. so much transferable there. And again, the level that I was using it was not the full on OO, you know, deep use of it at that stage as well. And Oracle, that was the first relational database that I'd used. Uh, and, and since then, when I'd moved from using PL SQL to Transact SQL, the SQL Server, you know, again, so much transferable knowledge that, mm -hmm. you know, it, it just worked really well. So really the first 
job that I had, it was really whatever the project entailed, you know, and it did keep us moving around, but mostly with the Microsoft stack. And I think after that first role, moving on to others and subsequent ones, I just doubled down more on the Microsoft stack. It's just what the companies used. It was very popular. There was the most amount of jobs in the, in that, you know, it all just kind of came together and naturally worked out that way. And then over the years, I, I just really narrowed that focus even more on the Microsoft uh, ecosystem, which just keeps evolving and growing. You know, .NET yeah. keeps evolving. We now have things like Power Platform, uh, you know, and Dynamics and many other systems um, that it's really been maybe 80% of the, the tech that I use. So it's, yeah, just naturally, naturally gone that way, I think. And it's and it's matured and changed a lot over that time frame. So I'm assuming when you say Microsoft stack, besides C, you know uh, C plus plus, which Microsoft uh, put out, are you know diving into maybe early ASP it would have been interesting. I mean, we're about the probably in the same age range, right? Some of the technologies we had to use. <laughs> I um, think so. Yeah. Did you did you because I know Power Platform is 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 a lot is very much web based, right? Uh, other than I think some of the dynamic stuff, but even then, it's it's got the web user interfaces. I, did you dive into web programming at that point or was it still like the the full-fledged uis yeah that that's a great question so th there were many roles where i did use win forms and it was this you know drag and drop ui uh, very straightforward and easy to use um and then the code behind which could have been code behind the web as well so yep early on i did do that classic asp i did the forms uh, you know <laughs> <laughs> I've I've put my time in for sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've done that. And then when things leveled to, leveled up to uh, ASP.NET, and then you you get the extra features that came with that. Um, even around that time, I did some. I remember doing some side work using PHP oh, yeah. uh, as well. So I was using some LAMP stack uh, with with PHP and MySQL uh, just because the hosting was a bit cheaper. So when I was doing some side things, again, learning new things, lots of transferable knowledge, uh, but it was able to play with more toys as well. But for the day job and for the most part was the Microsoft tech stack. Um, I was dabbling in and out of the web as well as the wind forms and sometimes WPF and, and silver light at the time as well <laughs> you know, let, let me fully age myself here yeah um so yeah there, there was a lot of that and just as you say when when it goes to the power platform so much of it is web-based um uh, you know power apps essentially are just web apps uh, under the bonnet you, you use the browser uh, for the editing experience for the most part uh, at the moment as well so yeah it has seemed to you know again naturally uh, gone the way of you know um uh, web app development for sure so what brought you into power platform so uh, for those who don't know the difference power platform is a little more well, they, they bill it as low code, right? Low code instead of a full stack development. Uh, it's debatable if you build stuff in it, it's debatable whether it's low code. Uh, but what brought you into that power platform area versus that, you know, the the the, the richer .NET experience? Yeah, I, I guess the, uh, the, the short answer for that was when I got a, a new job at one stage, day one, they gave me three power platform projects. Oh, there you go. I'd heard of it never used it i was like okay what's this was, you know so so new and naive to it i was like okay i'm used to client tools that i'd install in windows you know whether it be visual studio visual studio code so many things I'm, right what do i need to install no 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 it's all it's all cloud-based it's all done in the browser and i just learned so much in in, in a short space of time but it's interesting as well because again we're going back to that oh i can sink my teeth into something new there's a new learning curve that i can get here mm -hmm. and learn something new so even though it wasn't let's say c plus plus and almost a, a native app going down to the metal um it, you know or or using the, the the web app development as you say you you can you can dig really deep into that it's almost using this abstracted layer this power platform um and my first thought to be honest was is this going to be a bit limiting you know um i've been i've been used to writing you know fairly low level things on occasion uh, i've even done some game developments uh, before as well which whenever i've used that and for simulations you can get quite low level use algorithms and all that fun stuff so i did think okay when i saw power effects and the power platform first impression i thought am i going to miss using those those tools that offer you know uh, a broader range of skills that you can use. So that was my initial thought. 
And then the more I did learn about it and realized how it's all based on Azure, you can dig to that Azure layer if you need to. You can extend it with pro code or code first options like plugins and many other things as well. Um, then it's it, it made me realize that I can actually do a lot with it. I, I wasn't as as boxed in as my first naive thought was. You know, there's so much I can do with this and extend it and and combine it with Azure, do overlapping architecture with other ecosystems, um, and not just Microsoft ecosystems as well. So I think the more I learned, the the more I got interested into it, and the more I doubled down on using the Power Platform, and that's really been the path path for me over the last two years is it, just spending more time with it learning more um and being part of the community learning from others and sharing with others uh and the more i've done that the more i've got the passion for it and learned more about it so it's it's kind of you know fed itself in a way yeah it's 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 fascinating for those who who use the, the licensing that gives you the premium version right or the i'm not even sure, i don't even know what they call it nowadays right but the version you pay for the sky's the limit, right? With the uh, premium connectors, uh, you could write, if you, if the, if it didn't do something you needed to you just go write your own code and then API it in. Right. So it's, exactly. uh, it's a fascinating yeah. concept where you're right. It, you start off thinking, Oh, I'm stuck in this box. And then you realize like, well, no, I can peel back a layer and I can peel back. A, oh, wait a second. I could pretty much peel back all the way if I wanted to. Exactly. Exactly. And, uh, a, a bit of a shameless plug. Well, there's an event coming up, the Festive Tech Calendar, uh, which is is releasing different tech sessions. Any any tech stack as well. It's not Azure specific or Power Platform specific. Um, I'm going to be one of the uh, the helpers with it. But there's really two creators of the event, uh, Gregor and Richard. And there's a session that I've proposed for this year as well, which is just as you say, uh, creating a Power App, but then creating your own custom connector to get some really awful Christmas cracker jokes from an API and then, bring them, <laughs> and then bring them into this power app. But just as you say, just to show you can extend this mm -hmm. if you really need to. Yeah. And I I've dabbled a little and I've learned a lot about the UI, right? You, if you want it to be a really nice UI, there's a lot of, there's a lot of creative. I could see where your creativeness would come out at that point. Right. Because um, while it's all drag and drop and Sure, you could do the drag and drop, but it won't look pretty whatsoever, right? If you want it to look nice, there's a lot of work that has to yeah. be. You have to learn that concept that it has. Exactly right. Yeah, there's there's so much you can do out of the box, but then almost every app could look uh, the same. But yeah, as you say, when you can use controls like the HTML control, you can bring that CSS in. You can, you can create SVGs. There's, you can create animation with the SVGs. You know, you can start making things a bit more game-like and a bit more interactive, um, almost going back to you know, the days of Flash and things like this. You know, I'm going to keep aging myself here, right? Uh, <laughs> You're aging I, me right along with you. I've coded <laughs> all of those same things. I'm not going back to punch cards just yet but um yeah there's so many things you could do with the ui if again if you put the time in and do the styling or bring some more of these code first elements in with power apps i won't get too deep here but you can do things like pcf controls uh, this P power apps component framework pcfs so if you really did want something custom and bespoke hey that is an option it they likely need some uh you know um sort of code first or pro coder experience but it certainly is an option. So when did you know you wanted to try to create a course for LinkedIn? How did that come about? Yeah, that you know, that was really fun. So when I was starting to try and modernize my skill set, really the last few years, maybe three years uh, ago, is I'd been doing a lot of .NET, um, you know, lots of wind forms and some other maybe older uh, tech stacks or more, you know, more legacy ones, people might see it as. And I realized that I wanted to modernize some of my skills. So Azure was really the first thing that I went to. I thought, right, I want to learn more about, uh, you know, cloud first. I learned a little about AWS. Uh, I learned more about Azure. And the more that I, again, got stuck in, did a couple of certifications, I thought, hey, this is really fun but I want to learn it to the level where I can present or I can give a session or I can I can teach someone about it. So the more I did with Azure, I, I learned, I, I was maybe three or four certifications in and I thought, right, I'm starting to get a good handle here. I'm starting to use it hands-on as well. Um, a friend of mine, um, uh, Gregor, I'd noticed that he'd uh, published a LinkedIn learning course uh, and it just, I was just nosy. I was like, that sounds fun. 
what's this? Um, so I just gave him a call. And uh, well, next time we caught up, just asked him about it. Say, oh, you know, how did this come about? How, what was the process like? And uh, he gave me an overview of what the process was like. It sounded a lot of fun and they sounded really great to work with. Excuse me. So, yeah, after talking with Gregor and just learning a bit more about that, um, I then uh, got connected with with some folks at LinkedIn Learning, uh, just had a conversation with them just to understand what the process was like. Uh, you know, how were the deadlines? You know, uh, yeah. what was your commitment every week? You know, the kind of the, the logistics of everything, really. Um, so after going through that and talking about what priorities they had for courses, I realized that one that I'd recently passed, which was the, the DP900, that was the Azure Data Platform Fundamentals, uh, was something that was high on their list. So it just, you know, the stars aligned. It was just a great fit. And I thought, hey, why not? If 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 I like it, I may do more. If I don't, it's been a, an experience, something new to learn, just like speaking, blogging and everything else that I've been getting up to. It's just, hey, I'll try it, see if I like it. And if I do, I'll keep going. Um, so, yeah, I managed to release that. That was uh, roughly this time last year, actually. I think it was uh, November last year when that was released. Um, so, yeah, a lot of fun. Uh, I'd recommend it if anyone uh, is interested in pursuing that as well. They do say that the uh, the best way to learn is to teach something. Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. And I've heard these phrases before is that, uh, you know, watch one, do one, teach one. Mm -hmm. Or as you say, if, if you can learn it to the level where you can teach it. And sometimes for me, when I give a presentation for a user group or a, a conference, I know I'll need to really know my stuff to do that. So it's actually helping me scale up even more and get more confidence in those skills. And the certifications, which was my first way of modernizing my skill set to try and open me up to the job market and grow my career a bit more and develop myself as well, was, hey, I'll need to understand this well enough to pass an exam in this. And that really forced me to learn and really know my stuff. So, yeah, it, it kind of it's a win win when I do things like that. So as a podcast, a podcast host myself, I'm curious, how did your podcast come about? Yeah, that was, that was, uh, that's been a lot of fun. We've done that for a few months now. So on air in the cloud is something that me and a couple of friends have talked about maybe for just as many months before we started it, <laughs> uh, you know, what's the name, uh, what would the logo be? You know, all the kind of, again, going back to logistics of we want to execute this well, you know, it's all in the implementation, right? Mm -hmm. So we talked about it. Okay, let's do it. Azure focused. I'm like, well, you know, I, I overlap with power platform, power platform and other things as well. Now, uh, should we involve those? Should it just be Microsoft tech? No, we'll do all. So really we thought what would be the podcast that we would want to listen to? And so this is going to be, uh, it's, it's interviews with people who use technology in interesting ways. Um, now, with that, there are many people like ourselves, people who do development and architecture, but we've got people lined up, other guests who, you know, run events and conferences. Um, again, still in the tech space, we do, we do have that um, common denominator there, but even people who work at data centers, Azure data centers, you know, the day to day things that we'd want to hear about and find interesting. Um, so yeah, really that's how it came about. Um, we, we made up a guest, guest list, approached a few people. Um, we've had some great guests so far. I think we're maybe eight to nine episodes in already. It's still quite early, but yeah, it's something we're enjoying and, um, it just seems to grow and grow and we're aiming for like a, a two weekly cadence, um, which we're just about hanging on to at the moment. <laughs> you know, that, and I know about cadence. Cadence is tough sometimes. Yes, because getting getting all the stars to align, not just your schedule, but your uh, co-host schedule and then your guest schedule. And well, it's, a, it's a blast to figure that out. It is. It is. It, it kind of it keeps us accountable to say, well, we have to stay on this schedule as much as we, you know, realistically can, as you say, as you say. And um as you say, sometimes you need to swap a guest or you need to just change plans or or change the schedule a bit. And it's part of the fun as well, you know, just trying to make everything work and uh, trying to make the time to to prep, you know, get the questions yeah. ready. What do we want to ask them? And, you know, what what's their career involved? They've got a new job recently. Whatever the case is, we, we want to kind of, you know, take as much of that in and, and keep it interesting uh, uh, as well. So, yeah, yeah, lots of fun. Awesome. So as you've gone through this interesting career and and you've uh, moved around a bit, 
what's something that uh, you've witnessed that you go, man, I, I wish we didn't do it that way. I, 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 that could use some improvement, some maturity, maybe. Uh, what's a change that if we came to you, Keith said, you know, today you are the person who gets to make a change and, and we're going to do it. Or maybe the change that you're thinking of is so large, it's almost impossible to change immediately. But what's something we should consider changing um, in either way, in either case, what's something you've you've uh, witnessed through your career that you wish was different? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And there's so many things, you know, thinking about this, there's a few things I'm thinking of. So, so for me personally, if it was, if it was, you know, I guess there's a couple of answers here. Me personally, I, I wish I got involved with tech community a lot mm -hmm. earlier. The, the more I've done that, the more I've learned, the more my eyes have been opened and I've, I've seen new perspectives. And I thought I was doing that before, but there's nothing like meeting people from different countries different cultures they've worked in different sectors and it really has helped me learn and grow so much more than i ever imagined that i would and the more that I have learned i i guess if there was something maybe industry-wide or or bigger and i and i had the power to affect this i'd really love to see more diversity in technology um i, I know it's an ongoing thing and other people may have mentioned it but you know most of the time I've worked with people very similar to me and we've had very similar perspectives, mm. but the more I've dealt with people from, again, I, I've been lucky enough that I've moved, uh, I've moved around a few times. I've been lucky enough to, to work and live in the U S throughout the UK in different places. Um, you know, and it's just been great to see those other perspectives and work with people, um, you know, from, di from different uh, backgrounds as well. Uh, you know, with a power platform, you do get that where so many people have career switched because it is seen as, as you say, low code or no code is that it's almost like using an Excel or a PowerPoint where, you know, most people can pick this up and intuitively use it to an extent before you may or may not need pro <laughs> code or code first adoption. Right. So that's been really great as well. Working in this community is seeing more of that people from change management, people who were accountants before and switched just a few years ago, or people like me who have been coders for most of their career. But I think, yeah, more diversity, more perspectives, and just seeing, you know, people from all different backgrounds, you know, bringing everything they've got to offer, uh, everyone would benefit from that, in my opinion. Uh, I completely agree. I completely agree. I, I'm lucky I live in the Washington, D.C. area, which is kind of a melting pot because it brings people from all over the United States, uh, especially with, you know, gover see the government being here and also internationally because of all the embassies and, and everything. So we've been very uh, blessed to have a very multicultural area in the United States. Um, is there any anything else? Because you said there might be a couple of things. Yeah, I think that was the powerful one. But I think for me personally is is that, you know, getting involved in the community more yeah. and maybe considering keeping the skills more current and more modern as well. You know, it's something that I think I did very early on when I had that big learning curve when I went from a, a non-CS degree to, to you know, working in the in industry and knew that I had to play catch up. I was with other people who just graduated many with really good grades right. from, you know, four year CS degrees, uh, you know, they knew computer science, they knew the lingo, you know, I, I remember remembering my first job as well, you know, as, as funny as this sounds, when they said, oh, could you populate that table? I was like, populate, you know, was, what do you mean populate? When have you put data in it? I'm like, okay, right, right. You know, there was kind of silly things like this where I just didn't know these terms. Uh, you, could you make that code more generic? like generic, you know, I, I, I do remember, you know, in hindsight, you know, finding that funny, but like, oh yeah, I just, I just didn't know I wasn't around that environment. So the first few years I really did upskill and make the effort, even looking into Java certifications at the, at the time as well, but realized that, you know, that role did, did mean bouncing around different tech stacks. And I think to be honest with myself for many years, then I just, I fell into the, you know, the .NET SQL server, mostly on-prem, mostly WinForms as well, and just staying with it. And I was content with it, but I realized, you know, after a while, I wanted to get that passion back, that, that, that passion that I first felt with coding and being able to create something and seeing, well, what else can it do? And so when I've done that in the last few years, I've been, uh, a bit busier and things have evolved in many ways because of that as well. So I really wish I'd done that sooner. Hmm. That's good. That's really great advice. 
So Keith, what's next for you? Anything uh, coming up here in the new future going into the new year? Yeah, so a few things coming up. Um, so on uh, the 31st of October, so tomorrow, um, my user group, the Scottish Power Platform user group is hosting a, a virtual event. So really looking forward to that one. We've got some great speakers. Uh, um, at least one of them is going to be a brand new speaker as well, which we love. We're after new speakers. We want to get people introduced to, you know, uh, being part of the community, sharing what they've got to offer as well. So looking forward to that. Um and I think, uh, yeah, in December as well, we've got the festive tech calendar, which I'll be part of as well. I'll be one of the uh, one of the helpers with that one. And again, we often get lots of new speakers and people getting involved with all kinds of different, um, you know, ideas as well. Some people will, you know, sing a song. You know, they'll do a, a use tech and create a song and use synths. Uh, other people will give tech demos or ask me anything sessions. So. I always look forward to that every year uh, and it's a, a privilege to uh, to be part of it as well. Well, Keith, I really appreciate the time you give me tonight to uh, learn about you, hear a bit about your history, reminisce even on some of the technology that I have not thought about in a long time. And uh, I, I really look forward to what's uh, coming up for you next. Yeah, thanks so much, Jeremy. It's been my pleasure. It's been really great meeting you. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me on your show.